Hey there, it's Jitterybug. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are in Better Minecraft. If you are an early watcher of my channel, thank you guys so much. But also, you probably remember that the very first Let's Play series I did was Better Minecraft. It was not very long lived because I learned a lot by doing that series and I wanted to start fresh, which I did with all the mods. So if you enjoy this video, go check out my all the mod series. I didn't get to dive into Better Minecraft too much, so that's what I wanted to do and see how many quests I could complete in 100 days. So just like with any other Minecraft Let's Play, the very first thing you gotta do is punch a tree. And because we have a tree chopper mod, I also made a wooden axe right away to collect more wood. Here is the quest page that we will be using to guide our journey here today. But day one, first things first, I had to get some stone so I could make myself some stone tools. Once we did that, I began my journey to find a place to settle down. I was trying to grab as many resources as I could as we went, and I stumbled across a village which was absolutely amazing. So I snagged a bed and grabbed everything that I could from the chests and took some of their hay so I could make bread and breed cows later on. But then it was time for me to move on. I spotted this big dungeon across the river from the village, but I definitely did not have the tools to take it on quite yet. So I just stole some bookcases and left the village. I did stumble across some very adorable creatures on my way out. Are these capybaras? Oh my gosh, look at those guys. They're so cute. Oh, little squeaks. Oh adorable. I continued to travel until the sun started to go down and I completely forgot that I had a bed in my inventory so I ended up killing a couple sheep so that I could make a sleeping bag um, but then I made the sleeping bag and went to sleep. At the start of day two I continued to run and eventually found the spot that I was going to call home for the next 99 days. Okay, so I'm just gonna put my house, I think right over here. So let's start chopping down some trees. I continued to do some resource gathering, build some more tools, cut down some more trees, did a little bit of landscaping so that I would have a nice place to build my home. And then I got to work building the most boring rectangle house you've ever seen. Pretty soon, all my house needed was a door and some windows. It took me a while to add those for some reason, uh, but I wanted to go and find some coal and luckily there was this little cave just up the hill with plenty of coal for me to grab really quick so that I would have something to make some torches with and feel safe in the caves. I wanted to get a head start on collecting iron so I dove right away into that cave and I found quite a bit of iron without even having to go anywhere too scary. I want to light up this back area a little bit more. There we go. Now I feel better. I grabbed pretty much everything I could find in that cave and got a good amount of coal and iron and I was feeling really good about the start we had in this world. By the time I left the cave it was nighttime so I sprinted on home and made it there safe and sound, but it still didn't have doors or windows, so it made it very easy for a skeleton to attack me the next morning. No, sir. No, sir. Not allowed. Not allowed. Not allowed. Not allowed. Ah, <sighs> okay. With that exciting morning over with, I had to build a furnace to smelt up a bunch of iron, and I also wanted to get started on breeding some cows, so I made a little pen and lured in the cows that were close to my house and I was able to start breeding them. Once I had the cows I wanted to have another food source so I got started planting a little garden so I planted some wheat, some potatoes, some asparagus, and some tomatoes. Then it was back to resource gathering so that I could prepare to go back into the mines. I made a shield and a little bit of armor and climbed back up the hill into the cave we found earlier. Alrighty, so we're on our way to the cave. It's almost nighttime. But we made it safe and sound. Then I just grabbed 
as many resources as I could and made my way down so I could hopefully find some diamonds. I found myself in many caves, fighting many mobs, and I also found some emeralds, which was kind of cool. But then I just continued to follow those caves on down to diamond level. It didn't take too long before I spotted my first diamonds, and a couple more after that followed, so I had a pretty good haul on our first big mining trip. Before long, I was looking for an easy way out of the cave when I spotted a nice waterfall that went up super far. Aha! Oh my gosh, those poor, poor squids. They're just like spawning and then being yeeted into the ground at like terminal velocity. Poor guys. Pretty soon I found some daylight and consulted my map to get back home. Okay, map time. Oh, we're close to home. Right? Yeah, that's my house. That way. We are back at home and we have our diamonds. Success. Once we got back, I finally put a door on our house and went to sleep for the night. The next morning was day five and this was the day I made our first diamond pickaxe and went to grab some obsidian. If you are liking this video so far, please like and subscribe. It would mean a whole lot to me and help my channel a lot. On our way back from grabbing the obsidian, I found this little structure and I wanted to make sure the chest wasn't trapped because I didn't know what the structure was. Uh, and there's just a little bit of bread in there and, and not too much. So I killed a couple cows, planted some more sugarcane and got back to my house just as the sun was setting once again. Instead of going to sleep right away, I made a quick cutting board and turned some of my logs into stripped logs and collected the bark to make paper so that I wouldn't need as much sugar cane to get books. I was able to make a good amount of bookshelves, especially because I collected the books from the village. So that was super nice. I then planted some of the cucumbers I found and collected sand so that I could finally get some windows on my house. I smelted that up right away and made some panes and our house was finally secure from mobs just waltzing in the windows. I did a little bit more mining to grab some of the copper that I had been skipping because I wanted to smelt it so I could get experience. So I got a good chunk of copper and threw it all into our furnace. Alrighty, I think I'm gonna run around and try to just find some cows to get more leather. As I was doing that, I found a fancy witch's hut and I saw that there was a black cat on our little mini map. So I went and grabbed some fish so that I could tame it. But first I had to kill the witch that was living there. Ow. Once the witch was dead, I popped into her cabin and took some of the potions and slam balls out of her chests and then we slept in the bed that was there since it was getting pretty dark. The next morning I was able to tame that black cat that I saw and take it home with me and it sat on my little pink bed and it was amazing. By the time we got home some of that copper was done so I did get a little bit of experience from that. I still had a ways to go before level 30 but I figured I should get started building our little enchantment hut so I built a separate building away from our house and filled it with all of the bookshelves that I had so far, which wasn't quite enough to get to level 30. And then I plopped a nether portal right on the roof because I hate hearing the nether portal sounds when I'm inside of my house. I made myself a flint in steel quick and lit the portal. I jumped in right away without realizing that I did not have any gold armor on. So after I took a peek at our spawn, I turned around pretty quick to put on some gold boots. But then I returned to collect some quartz in order to get to level 30 a little bit more quickly. I spent a good chunk of time collecting all of the quartz and then a piglin beast spawned because apparently I was mining too much of their gold. So he ran towards me and he couldn't reach me because he was too tall. So it was not super difficult to kill him. And that was one of our quests that we had. So we completed that quest before day 10 even. I gave a gold ingot to a baby piglin and he just stole it and ran away. So don't give your gold 
to babies because they won't give you anything in return. I found a little goblin trader close to our portal, so that was super nice because eventually we could get some emeralds from Netherrack. Uh, I kind of want to do a little bit of bartering, so I need to make a crafting table here really quick. I spent a bit of time bartering with the piglins and I collected some of this sincinocyte ore, I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, and then I had enough nether rack to get an emerald and then get some nether warts. So that was pretty nice. But then another piglin beast uh, spawned in. So I had to kill him before he hit me with his bat too many times. As I was minding my own business, suddenly a piglin got aggressive and started shooting me. So I ran through my portal and he followed me through and I had to kill him because he was attacking me. So we went to the nether and we defeated a piglin beast. Now that I was at level 30, it was time to start doing some enchanting. So I got fortune two on my diamond pick, which I was really happy about, honestly. And I bred my cows, collected some stuff in my garden, and then headed into the mines to hopefully find more diamonds with a fortune two pickaxe. This is just a drop off. Can I? Ow. Bro. Okay. He took care of himself, I guess. Some coal up here. I'm happy to grab. I just want to go down like as far as I can without having to dig an absurd amount. All right, let's drop down here. I got pretty deep in the mines and then I noticed something on my mini map that looked like a structure of some sort. Some sort of dungeon? Oh, I think I found it. Aha! I spent a good amount of time exploring this dungeon. I'm not sure exactly what mod it's from, but it had these little jail cells and it was nice to get some extra food and coal in my inventory. And then I stumbled upon this treasure room and I was convinced that the chests had to be trapped because they were laid out so perfectly in the middle of the floor. So I took some of the side hallways first before opening up those chests. Now these chests were trapped, and I am very glad that I checked beforehand, otherwise I would have been stuck in a hole and had to dig my way out. There were also some dispensers with arrows, and several more chests with lots of goodies, including several diamonds, which was pretty nice to find. After I had made my way through all of the hallways and got all of the loot that I could find, I ended up back in the main treasure room and it turns out those chests weren't trapped at all. So I grabbed what was in them, which wasn't really that great. It was just like some gunpowder and string and a few golden apples, which was nice. I did find this goblin trader, which gave me a good amount of iron for the ore that I had. And then I went down a staircase in the dungeon and found another chest. And then I found a spider spawner in the dungeon so I fought off those spiders and lit up the spawner and then for some reason there was a pillager so uh, we killed him and then eventually I made my way out of the dungeon and I started back on my quest to find some more diamonds before I found the diamonds however we did run into this amethyst which had the amethyst golem in it so I was able to kill him pretty quickly with a bow and arrow, which was great. And then I went back into the mines and pretty shortly after found some more diamonds. So that was great. I then left the mines and it was sunset. So I had to run home in the dark and smelt up some more of the things we got. I did some enchanting and headed back into the nether in order to collect some more experience. I did also get the return to sender achievement. <laughs> did it. As I was minding my business, collecting some quartz, some piglins figured out what the explosive reeds did. Do I need any? Whoa. What the frick? Did you guys come? Did you? Um. At least now I knew to stay away from those things. I also found this little spawner, but I ended up accidentally hitting a zombified piglin and it did not go very well for me. Please. Nope. 
nope, nope, nope. Okay, let's lead them through. Let's lead them this way. Oh no. So yeah, I thought that they would hit those explosives and blow up, but they dodged them somehow and I was just trapped. So that was our first death, which was kind of sad, but we continue anyways. After looting the spawner, I ran into this skeleton horse thing. I don't really know exactly what it was, but we killed it and it wasn't super difficult to kill. So that's a win in my book. It was then time to leave the nether and do some more enchanting since we had gained a couple of levels. That's protection four. That's protection three. I will take that. At this point, I was itching for some adventure, so I decided to head into the snow to try to fight the mammoth, but I first ran into this very terrifying pillager. You'll see. But I do not see any pillagers other than this one here. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Wait, I don't have a shield. Hold on. Bros. I don't have a shield. Oh my gosh. Wait, 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 what's happening? Guys, 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 what's happening? What the heck? Well, I have no idea what just happened, but uh... I have a totem of illusion now. Did I kill him? Is he dead? It seems like he just disappeared. So yeah, that was uh, pretty terrifying, but... I continued on my journey and the next morning we found a mammoth. I was able to kill it pretty easily and it was with a baby so I felt really bad but I was just trying to complete those quests. I then found this snow temple and water had already gotten into it so it was not good. Is there a full room down there? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Um. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen, but uh, it, it did. Oh, okay. We're just going to leave, you know? That's okay. That's okay. We don't need to be here right now. I continued to run around the snowy biome to see if I could find the Night Witch's Tower. And I didn't end up finding that, but I found a couple of other super interesting things. I found this tower that had some silverfish in it, but really nothing else that interesting. So I took a look from the top of a mountain and I found some sort of building and I decided to head towards that. Before I could make it all the way there, I found an interesting altar with a hidden chest, but it was just a golden sword, so nothing too useful there. I found my way to the building I'd seen, but there was a frostologer there, so I quickly took care of him before looting the tavern we found. He gave us a lovely little ice totem. So that was cool to get. From there, I just explored the little tavern, found a snowman, which I was able to finish a few quests from finding. From there, I continued my adventure and found another tower. There was nothing in this tower except for some spiders in the basement, but I climbed up to the top grabbed everything I could from all the chests, and then went down to the basement to take care of the spiders. It took me a second to find the spider spawner, but it was hidden underneath some hay bales. So once I destroyed that, because I was never going to be coming back here, I could loot the rest of those barrels, which had a little bit of gold in them, and some iron, and head back out into the cold. It wasn't too long after that that I found this one building village in the middle of nowhere. There were a bunch of villagers living there and a bunch of beds on one floor, but it was just one singular building. So I grabbed everything I could and continued on my journey. As night fell, I came across this huge tower full of pillagers and I died once again. Ready to get wrecked? Get wrecked! Oh, oh, we got wrecked, guys. Guys, we're the ones who got wrecked. Luckily, I had slept not too far away at the tavern, so I was able to make it back and take out the pillagers that had killed me before. He's doing magic-y stuff. All right. Ah! Oh my gosh, that scared me so bad. I need you all to die, okay? Ah, ah. I was able to take out the pillagers and explore the tower. 
I also got a couple of wolves on my journey at some point. I don't know exactly when that happened, but we got some wolves in the woods. So we continued to fight pillagers as they popped up and my wolves helped me out a whole bunch and I found a secret door down to a basement. Now the basement was full of pillagers. There were so many of them and it was terrifying. Ah! I made my way through the structure, fighting off pillager after pillager after pillager. Luckily I had my bow and arrow, so I was able to hit them from afar. Splash potion of slowness. Soon enough, it was fairly empty and I was able to loot all of the chests in the basement. Thank you, dog. I want to keep some of this footage in just so you guys can see what it looked like, but there were a couple bedrooms, a little brewing room. I did run into a magician and I got a totem of undying, which was so amazing. And there were just winding hallways with several rooms that looked very similar, like this storage room. And I did get a good amount of emeralds and some other treasures. Once again, it was time to get back out into the snow. And pretty close by was this huge military looking fort type thing filled with strays. Okay, let's climb up here. Give me arrows, please. Ouch. So that was uh, fun to kind of raid and I got a lot of arrows from it. There was a bit of an interior section, so I went in there and found a couple barrels of treasure. And there was also a bed, so I just spent the night there since it was getting dark pretty quickly. By this point, it was about day 20, so I wanted to get home pretty soon, so I quickly took care of a couple more strays and then headed back out. I did run into a cabin as I headed back towards home. Sir. Oh, this is like the illusion dude. Me and my dogs made pretty quick work of the illusion pillager. There he is. Ah. And I found a villager in the basement, so I broke the bars to his prison cell and dug out a spot to stay for the night since being upstairs, I was too close to monsters to sleep. It was now day 22, so I tried to book it on home and I made it home later that day. I pretty quickly decided to head into the nether since I wanted to find a fortress so I could get some blaze rods and hopefully get to the end soon. Luckily, there was a fortress pretty close to our portal with this kind of ruined bastion looking thing on top. So I looted what I could and headed on down into the fortress. Oh, this is the fortress. Okay. Got it, got it. I'll take that. Oh, hi. Hi, buddy. I stayed at that blaze spawner for a while collecting blaze rods and then headed deeper into the fortress to explore a little bit more. There were a handful of chests around, some towers. We were in a nether jungle biome, which was kind of cool. I love all of the ambient noise in the background. And then we found a castle. Um, oh my gosh, this is one of those castles. I made pretty quick work of taking out the mobs in the front of the castle and in the base room there. Hi there, piggy boy. And then I just looted everything that I could. Headed upstairs, grabbed everything on the second floor, and then got to the top and 
after being scared by some wither skeletons, looted all the barrels at the tops of all of the towers. Okay. He's dead. Ah! Alright. Um. Hey, there's another one. There's so many of them up there. Cool. Alright. No more withers. Once I had looted the entire fortress, I headed deeper into the nether. I found this huge wither dungeon, but I couldn't get in and the blocks weren't breaking. I don't really know why. I might need to come back in this world at some point and figure it out, but I just continued on my journey through the nether, finding some pretty cool biomes like this mushroom one and this swamp. And after some exploration, it was day 26 in the nether swamp. So I tried to go home. I can't. Ah, 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 ah. Ended up using my totem of life because I almost died in lava, which would have been bad. But then I traversed my way through several other biomes and eventually made it back to my portal safe and sound. I got home, did some quick brewing, and once it was nighttime, I headed out to fight some mobs. I was looking for ender pearls so that I could find the stronghold. But I also found some orcs, so I killed all of those guys, had several battles with endermen. I also made a hammock so that I could sleep during the day to skip to night and kill off some more endermen. I didn't want to lose too much time, so instead of sleeping the day away, I decided to do a little bit of fishing, but then day 31 came around and it was time to find the stronghold. After just a little bit of looking, we found it about 2,000 blocks from home. Hi there, Skelly. I spent a pretty long time clearing out the stronghold in Better Minecraft. It is a very large building. There was also a lot of loot in some of the chests, so I was able to stock up on a lot of food and coal. But as I went, I continued to fight more mobs and try to light up the entire stronghold. Thanks to our minimap, it was pretty easy to locate the portal room. So once I did, I got ready for our battle. We're gonna put down this bed. Oh my gosh. I just threw one, I didn't mean to do that. <gasps> okay, guys, we're ready to go to the end on day 34. Okay, ready? Ah! We made it to the end. And it was finally time to fight the dragon on day 34. <gasps> oh my gosh. This is terrifying. <gasps> Dragon! Um... You don't gotta be doing that, good sir. Uh, Enderman! I didn't mean to look at you if I did. I'm sorry. Ah! Ah! Alright, we got that one. Okay, they're mad at the dragon, not at me. Ow! And then I do need to get to the top of this tower. Excuse me, Mr. Dragon. 
Um. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Hey! 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 Okay. I gotta get that one still. That was too high. Uh, I can't tell where I'm hitting. Is that the last one, though? I think it is. Alright. Ouch. Oh, we have that one still, too. Yeah! Yeah! Okay. Ooh. Ah! We did it. Okay. Now... How many arrows? Ow! Ow! Oh my gosh. Sir? Where are you? Ow! 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 Okay. That was a good... That was a lucky, lucky, lucky fall. Hit it when it comes down and lands. Oh, I'm sorry, did I look at you? Like... There we go. Okay. Ow! Stop that! Oh my gosh. Y'all, we almost died. Oh, we gotta be more careful. Let's see if I can get a hit on the dragon. Nope, nope, down, 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 down. Down, 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 down. Okay. Okay. Um I'm actually gonna do this. Nope. Nope. Dude. Dude, I'm good. And then let's go back and get our dragon egg. Okay, so... Aha! Where do we go now? Ah, probably that thing right over there. That's probably where we go. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh my gosh. What? Wh whoa. This is insane. After successfully killing the dragon and getting our dragon egg, I decided to just take the plunge and head straight into the Outer End Islands. There are so many new biomes and it is kind of terrifying, but I found this little boat and it had an ender chest, so I was able to store some stuff in there and it also had several potions of instant health, so I stocked up on those and continued to explore. There was so much to explore. I don't think I even explored everything and I was out there for a very, very long time, but I found this really cool neon cactus. Neon cactus. That's beautiful. I love that. Let's go see what this little house is down here. Knock, knock. Countryside. What does this say? Oops. Enter a village in the end. Oh, it's a village. Apparently there are villages in the end now. So I grabbed a little bit of loot from the village and then I found an end abandoned mineshaft, which was kind of terrifying because I had no idea what to expect, but there was just a couple of chests. So I was able to get some interesting items, but other than that, it was actually pretty boring. So I headed back out and continued my exploration. I traveled through several different biomes, had no idea what to expect in any of them, but then this one was definitely the worst. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Wait, wait, they actually kind of hurt. Holy crap, holy crap. I'm gonna die, I'm straight up gonna die. Holy crap, I didn't realize that they were that strong. Oh my gosh. Run away from the ender warthogs. Why are there so many? Why are there so many? 
there should not be this many. Ah. So yeah, that was absolutely terrifying and I ran out of there as fast as I possibly could and I found a end temple. After fighting off the annoying endermites, I dug down to the bottom, got rid of all of the TNT, and I ended up finding some shulker shells. So I was able to make myself a shulker box and carry a bunch more loot, which was super nice because my inventory was so, so full. Once I got all the loot from the temple, I headed back out and found what looked like a pillager tower, but was full of shulkers and there were phantoms everywhere. So I grabbed some loot from this portal and attempted to fight the shulkers. I did have to run away for a moment because I kept getting knocked around by all of the phantoms, but then I was able to return and get all of the loot that was in the shulker boxes inside of the tower. I wasn't quite ready to go home yet, so I continued to explore and I'm very glad I did because I found this crashed airship and it had an elytra. Once I had my elytra, I was ready to get on home and nearby there was a little portal that took me right back to the main island. So I got back into the stronghold and flew home with the elytra. When we got home, we were able to check off several quests and then it was time to begin an actual house because our storage was overflowing. We're on day 41, we're almost halfway there guys. It somehow took until day 41 to actually start building a house, but I got to work and got some maple wood and built a pretty big house for us to live in. And by day 50, our home was complete. A little maple house. It'll give us some room. Uh, so here's the inside. I quite like the inside, honestly. Uh, we'll have storage over here. I think we're gonna do an enchantment setup up here. Um, I might do just a little loft with a bed up there, but then down here we'll just have kind of um, crafting, maybe like a kitchen with like brewing over here. So yeah, that's what we've got so far. Uh, let's just keep on decorating this thing. Um, but I want to get Tom's storage put in here. And that's exactly what I did. I set up our Tom's storage network so that we could have everything in our chests and I transferred everything on over. I then wanted to prepare to battle the eye, but we needed some crying obsidian to do that. So I went and tried to barter with some piglins, but I couldn't get enough. So then I found that there was some in the nether that was just hanging out. So I went and grabbed some of that before heading home and going to fight the eye. Are you guys ready? Cause I'm not, Ugh. okay, back up, back up. Just, just give it a second, I guess. Hi, I. How are you? Oh, there he goes. Okay. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. One more. Ah, we did it! And we have the prime eye. Okay, we killed the eye. We did it, we did it, we did it, we did it. And there's the portal to the void. Okay, why do I feel like I can do the void thing now? I used half my arrows though. The dilemma. Do I go into the void? Will I regret it if I just go now? Um, I'm kind of a risk taker. If you know what I mean, you, you know, like, I have, 57 plus 6 arrows. Okay, so I guess we don't need arrows at all. Let's go. <gasps> oh my gosh. Guys. I'm falling. I'm, I'm falling. My computer freaked out and wouldn't load it in, so I actually used a totem. So I quickly switched to creative and then switched back to survival right away once I knew I was on safe ground and went to fight the void shadow. I also brought two totems, so I put another one in my inventory just to keep myself safe. It took me a second to figure out how to defeat the void shadow, but you just have to make 
all of his little minions shoot at the glowing void crystal type things in order for him to lose health. So it took a very long time, but eventually we got him down to zero. Dude, shoot, shoot this thing. There you go. Yeah. Now let's go over here. There he is. This way. Okay. Good job. Good job. You've also got to go and hit the void fragments as they pop up, but they explode. So you lose some health and my armor was not doing great by the end of it, but I got it done eventually. Okay. 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 Did come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. This way. Come on. There you go. <gasps> Guys. He's dead. Um, um, do you guys go away now? Unfortunately, you still need to kill all of the little minions, the void shades, uh, cause they'll just keep on chasing you even if the void shadow is dead. So I did that and then looted the chest and got my egg back. Okay, they're all dead. Dragon egg, bottle of enchanting, uh, source stone. Okay, I don't want that there. Let's go back home. So let's fly home really quick. It was day 56 when we got home. So I put down the dragon egg since we could finally hatch it after defeating the void shadow and waited for her to hatch. Oh my gosh. Hey there, little guy. Here. Hi. All right. You're already kind of getting big. <gasps> Guys. Oh. My gosh. We finally had our dragon. So we took a little ride around the world and flew back home and landed on our roof. Now that we had the dragon, I wanted to find the night lich. So we threw our soul stars and followed them southwest until we found its tower. When we found the tower, the sun was setting, but I went in and got rid of some spawners, looted some chests, and then summoned in the night lich by placing the soul stars on the pedestals in the tower. He spawned in and I was pretty quickly wrecked. Okay, so I gotta kill the phantoms, I guess. A little further. Okay, it's also nighttime, which is annoying. Okay, you. Oh my gosh! It does do a lot of damage. Wow. I grabbed my elytra and flew back, grabbed my stuff, hopped on the dragon and got out of there because I knew I was not prepared for that fight right now. Instead, I headed to a desert to look for the desert rhino, which was another one of our quests. And I found him pretty quickly and was able to kill him without taking any damage. Hey bud. Oh, he's coming after me quick. Oh, that wasn't that bad. That was three arrows and he was down. By the time we got home from that little adventure, it was day 61. I had broken several pieces of diamond armor, so I headed back down into the mines in order to grab some more diamonds. I did place vein mining on our pickaxe, so I was able to make these big tunnels really quickly and get a good amount of diamonds from that. I headed back home, did some more enchanting and made new armor, and then I wanted to head into the nether to see if I could complete any more of those quests. I spent such a long time wandering in the nether. I found a new fortress and I could not find the blaze guardian or any of the other mobs that are part of the quests that we can complete. So I'm not sure if they are in the mod pack because there were some things 
in the quests that were not in the mod pack yet. So I just got a third wither skull, spawned in the wither, and fought him instead. Aha! It worked. Okay, so we have to wait for it to um, finish. It's gonna explode, right? Yeah. Bro, bro, stop that, okay? Bro, can you stop that, please? You're annoying. And I don't appreciate it. Oh wait, I gotta run, I gotta run. Bro, bro, can you die, please? Alright. We killed him. We're good. Once the wither was dead, I took my loot home and decided to do some more decorating around our house. So I tore down our old house and our enchantment building and then started to build a new platform for our portal. I didn't want to go through the hassle of moving it entirely. And then I wanted to build a nice place for our dragon. So I cleared out this cave, headed into the end again to get some more end stone. And I also put a waste stone there so I could get there more easily. And then I grabbed a bunch of end stone to decorate the cave. And here is the final result. I am honestly super, super happy with how it turned out. And I think our dragon likes it as well. At this point, I was pretty tired of fighting so many things so quickly. So I decided I wanted to spend a good amount of time making my house prettier and diving into some of the decoration mods. So I grabbed some new wood types in order to experiment, did a lot of terraforming around our house. I did have to run into the desert to grab some cactuses, but I found a very interesting copper structure. So I explored that and was able to find a little bit of loot in there. But then we flew on home and continued to decorate our house. I ended up putting a bedroom downstairs and we made some garland lights, but I really didn't like how they looked. So I took them down right away and I looked into what other quests we could complete just with crafting. We were able to make the XP book and fill it with 30 XP points right away. I was also able to make the trading post in the aquarium and some soap. So I did all of those as well. And then I made the diamond magnum torch. I needed some more obsidian for the ender pouch. So I went and grabbed that. Okay, so I can open my ender chest from anywhere with that. That's really nice. And then I decided to go find a beehive and look into the bumble zone a little bit. I didn't have a whole lot of time left, but I figured we should at least jump into that dimension for a little while. So I found a bee nest and entered the bumble zone. Hey, we made it to the bumble zone. That's good. That's good. Not much happened in the Bumble Zone. It was a lot of digging to get from place to place. I found this kind of disco floor area and a couple of honey cocoons with a little bit of loot in it. I grabbed some crystals. I found a bunch of spider spawners. So that took me a little while to take out all those spiders and get rid of all of the spawners. but I ended up hitting a bee and making them mad at me. So I grabbed the loot once all the spiders were gone and decided to exit the bumble zone since I had been wandering around and hadn't really found anything for quite a while. By the time we got home, it was winter and day 89. I figured we had 11 days left, so why not go big or go home? So I found an ancient city 
I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to kill the warden, but I was going to give it a shot. So I snuck my way in. I wanted to get as much loot as I could before attempting to kill the warden. This was my first time ever in an ancient city, so I was pretty scared because I didn't really know how loud I could be or what I could do without setting off the shriekers. But then there was a little goblin trader and he kept making noise. Bro, you gotta be quiet, okay? You can't make a noise. Eventually he did leave and I kind of moved away from him because he kept setting off the sensors. And I was super careful, tried to get rid of as many sensors as I could, loot as many chests as I could, until the inevitable happened. Oh no. Luckily, the warden did not spawn in just then, but it wasn't too long before I made several more mistakes. And he did spawn in. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh no. How much health does he have? I escaped him that time, so I just continued. To do my thing, trying to get rid of sensors and shriekers and cover them in wool. But unfortunately, the warden did not want me. Oh my gosh. So I guess we're going after him now. Gosh, we're definitely gonna die here. Oh! All right. Y'all, that was terrifying. Luckily, I had made a pocket wormhole and could teleport out of there to a waystone that I placed at the top of the tunnel down to the deep dark, and then I teleported on home. Once we were home, I flew around for a while with our dragon, since we were nearing day 100 to find a dungeon, but I never found one. Alrighty, everyone. It is day 100. Oh my gosh. I actually spent the last couple days after we flew around looking for a dungeon and couldn't find one, just kind of decorating up our property a bit, you know? Um, what's a nice world without some decoration? So here we are. 100 days later, we have our lovely little nether portal and our beautiful house here. And let's do a quick tour. I did make a couple of changes. So we, our little entryway, lots of paintings. We added some plants in, a little kitchen. And then we go into here, which is the bedroom with all of the puppies. And then if we head on upstairs, we have our little brewing station and our enchantment table and then right over here is our storage room and our waystone of course i am super happy with everything that we have accomplished and let's go visit our dragon who is finally on day 100 going to get a name and maybe fly her one last time here we also added some of these lanterns all the way up this path. Hey there, Melanie. Oh, we can barely see her name. All right. Should we go for one last flight here? Here we go. Let's take a look. Look at our little home. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I had so much fun in this world and diving into better Minecraft. Let's take a look at what we have accomplished. So, tutorial, easy. For the overworld, we didn't do the Night Lich and we never found the Void Blossom. In the Nether, we defeated a Piglin Beast and summoned the Wither. And then these ones, I just, I could not find anything even though I spent like hours wandering the Nether. 
And then in the Bumble Zone, we made the Crystal Shield and we found a Pollen Puff. Uh, we wandered the Bumble Zone for quite a while and could not find the Bee Queen. Eden Ring is not currently in this mod pack. It probably is now. It's been updated probably. So maybe I will have to do another 100 days in this world. Let me know if you would want to see that. In the end, which I'm quite proud of all of this, we defeated the Ender Dragon. We killed the Eye, a Ender Warthog, and an Ender Whale. We also did defeat the Void Shadow, but we can't unlock that until we killed the Obsidolith, but we never found one of those. And then we didn't get any of the other side things done. We did find a bundle and craft some garland lights and we got a lot of the miscellaneous quests done. So I am pretty happy with everything that we've accomplished today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as the sun sets over our lovely world, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye.